My name is Bree. When I went to high school, during my senior year, early on in the first semester, I remember noticing this one new kid in our school. I would call him Dave for this story. I had never seen him at our school before, and I had a history class with him. For the most part, that's all I knew of him. Beyond that, I didn't really notice him much at all. The next semester, I didn't have any classes with Dave. It was pretty early on in that second semester that one of my friends told me something shortly after I had gotten to school one day. She told me that Dave had been posting some really weird and borderline creepy Snapchat stories of me. Nobody in my friend group was friends with Dave on Snapchat, but apparently my friend had heard from a mutual friend about it. Somebody who was friends with Dave on Snapchat had seen his stories and found them really odd. When I asked for examples, I was told that he had occasionally taken photos of me in class or in the hallway without my knowledge. Other times, he would post random pictures and mention me for whatever reason. To me, this did seem pretty strange, and I felt like I should tell Dave to stop. But I knew this might be really awkward to do, or he might deny it altogether. I thought about it for a little while, but I never really saw Dave anymore anyways. I didn't have any classes with him anymore. Plus, I never saw him in the hallways in between classes either. Our school was pretty big, with about 2,000 students total. Over time, I just kind of ignored it. I figured that maybe he was a bit of a creep, or maybe he had a crush on me, but if he didn't see me anymore, he would get over it. Roughly two weeks after finding out about this, I was told once again by a friend that Dave had posted a weird story about me. My friend had actually befriended Dave on Snapchat to see his stories. He posted a picture of my car in the student parking lot, saying the caption, my favorite girl's car. Obviously, I found this really weird, and I knew that I needed to ask Dave to stop. Unfortunately, I could never seem to find Dave in the hallways, and I didn't want to go out looking for him. I decided that I would just add Dave on Snapchat, just for the purpose of asking him to stop posting weird things about me. So that day, when I got home from school, I asked my friend for Dave's username, and she gave it to me. Once I added Dave, he added me back, and he immediately snapped me, saying hi. I snapped him back, telling him that I was made aware of the strange things that he was posting about me, and that I needed him to stop doing so. He opened my snap, but didn't reply. Then, I deleted him. A couple of hours later, when I was in my bedroom, I suddenly heard a loud noise against my window. I had been at my desk finishing homework, which was about five feet from the window. I looked over to it, and there was another loud bang. This time, the window broke, and glass shattered everywhere. I jumped back and saw Dave standing right outside the window. He then started cursing at me. I was terrified. I already knew he did some creepy things, but this was really crossing the line. Then he came closer and started to crawl through the broken window. I jumped up and ran out of the room. My parents were home, but on the other side of the house in the living room. I ran over to them and was frantically screaming that somebody had broken in. Dave did not leave my bedroom and after we called the police, he must have left because when they got there, he was gone. Thankfully, I knew exactly who he was and he was found that same night. It was a bad idea for me to add him on Snapchat because my location was on and I guess Dave could see exactly where I lived then. Since then, I've turned my location off and I'm much more careful of who I add on Snapchat. Nothing else crazy like this has happened to me though. This story happened back when I was in college. Like many college guys, I used Snapchat quite a bit. I had probably over 1,000 Snapchat friends and would communicate with most of my friends through the app. I got to know a lot of my classmates better through snapping them or having snap streaks. Anyways, to get to the story, it all started one night when I was studying in my bedroom. I lived in a house with two roommates who were some good friends that I had made my freshman year. I had my own bedroom upstairs in the house, and so did each of my roommates. When I study, I tend to get distracted by my phone quite a bit, and when I looked at it on my desk, I saw somebody had added me on Snapchat. It was a girl named Kaylee. Her username didn't have a last name in it, just a bunch of numbers, so I wasn't quite sure who she was, but I figured that she went to my school, which is pretty large. I added her back, and I snapped her a picture of my face saying hi. She snapped me back, and she appeared to be around my age. We snapped back and forth for the rest of the night, and she told me that she also went to my university. The next night, I found myself home alone and bored. Both of my roommates went to their intramural sports games, and I had stayed home with an assignment, but I finished much earlier than I thought I would. I was still snapping Kaylee, and I told her about my situation. 
That's when she asked if I wanted her to come over. I really hadn't expected that, and I would have expected her to want to meet in a public place, or at least snap a few days before meeting, but I was cool with it. Kaylee asked me for my address, and I gave it to her. Both me and her were both on the snap map, and it appeared that she lived on the other side of campus. Kaylee snapped me that she was leaving and would be at my place shortly. I went down and attempted to clean up the house a little bit. About 15 minutes later, there was a knock at the front door. I walked downstairs, expecting to see Kaylee, but instead saw some guy. There was a guy with a jacket and winter hat standing at the front door. I was really confused. I opened up the door crack and asked what the guy wanted. He told me that he was Kaylee's friend and had given her a ride to my house. He told me that Kaylee was in the car down the street, but he wanted to make sure it was safe and I wasn't some crazy person. He told me that he was just trying to look out for her and asked if he could come inside and look around. I was really weirded out by this. It caught me by surprise and I told the guy to give me a second and then I closed the door. I checked the snap map and it showed Kaylee as being literally right outside of my front door right where the guy was standing. I knew this wasn't right. I snapped Kaylee asking who the guy was. She began typing quickly, and as she was typing, I looked outside and saw the guy typing on his phone. Eventually, she sent me a chat, and it said basically the same thing that the guy had said. The guy then knocked on the door again. I yelled from the other side for the guy to just leave, and I wasn't falling for his tricks. I then watched him walk away, and thankfully, he left. About 20 minutes later, I got a snap from Kaylee. I opened it to see a picture of the guy flipping me off. I opened it, but didn't respond. A short time later, I got another snap. This one was of the same guy saying, you still fell for a fake girl, you effing idiot. I then blocked the account. He was right in the fact that I had fallen for a fake girl, but I had seen pictures of her and wondered how he had done it. After some research though, I learned that the guy probably got some type of app that allows you to send pictures of snaps of whatever you want without it appearing as an uploaded photo. It's complicated, but not too hard to figure out. All the guy needed was multiple selfies of the same girl. I had noticed that her selfie style was a little different, but I looked past it. This whole thing was kind of embarrassing for me, but I'm just happy to say that I'm okay. I'm a female and in college. This all happened about six months ago. I've had a Snapchat since I was in middle school and have more friends on that app than I can even count. I get added by new people all the time and I usually accept the people who add me but that has since changed. I would post stories occasionally when I was with friends or whatever. One time, a guy screenshotted my story who I didn't know. I didn't really think much of it though until it happened again. When it did, I clicked on his profile and I really had no idea who the guy was or when we had became Snapchat friends. He didn't have a bitmoji, so I had no idea what he looked like. I searched his name on Instagram and Facebook, but it was a pretty common name and brought back no useful results. After that, I moved on. The next time I posted a story, he screenshotted it again though. This time, I sent him a message and asked him why he always screenshotted my stories. He opened up my Snapchat a very short time later and replied with a picture. I opened it up and was extremely creeped out. It was a picture of his wall that had countless photos of me taped to it. I saw many of the photos that I had posted on Instagram and all of my recent Snapchat stories. There were also some pictures from my Facebook and basically any photo of me that was online. But it got worse. There were some photos of me on his wall that I didn't remember being taken, like just pictures of me walking. I took a screenshot of the picture that he sent me and then I blocked his account. I couldn't believe what I had seen. Then I made my Instagram and Facebook accounts private. But that's when I realized maybe this guy was already one of my followers or friends. I searched his name on Facebook and sure enough, we were friends. I showed his profile to my parents and told them about what had happened. That's when I learned something very creepy. They told me that he was one of our neighbors and lived just down the street. We live in a pretty large neighborhood and I definitely didn't know all of our neighbors. I only know a few. I guess my dad had helped him snow blow his driveway a few years back. I couldn't believe it. My dad went over to talk to the guy, but he denied everything. I blocked the guy on all social media and I hope I never see him again. It's been a few months since my life has gone back to normal. Currently, I don't feel safe anywhere. I used to dorm at my college, 
but I had to go back home during the second semester due to strange occurrences happening there. I don't plan on dorming anytime soon. It might not be the smartest thing to share this since it's still under investigation, but maybe it will make people more cautious of social networking. It sure has made me wary of trusting strangers online again. November of last year was when the messages first appeared. Ever heard of Snapchat before? For those of you who don't know what Snapchat is, it's an app that lets you send picture messages to your friends, but that only lasts for a couple of seconds. Once those seconds are up, the picture disappears forever, meaning you can never see them again. You can only send pictures you take at the moment, and they can only be seen for the few seconds of the time that's given. You can also draw and write text on the pictures. You can even send videos. I never really knew about Snapchat up until I was introduced to it by my friends. They practically encouraged me to download it and, being the weak-willed person I am, I gave in to peer pressure. It seemed kind of fun at first. I was taking pictures and sending them like crazy. Most of the time, I just took pictures of myself making the goofiest faces and putting random letters for text. I also went out of my way to take pictures of the funniest things. I remember taking a picture of this dude's butt crack while he bent down to tie his shoes. Yeah, it was sick, but downright hilarious to me. There were a lot of people who added me as a friend on Snapchat. Most of them came from Facebook or the contact list on my phone. This also included some people I didn't know too well. But they still sent me pictures either way, and it was actually pretty nice. I guess Snapchat made it easier to break the ice with people I randomly added or haven't seen in a while. One day in November, someone called We Are One underscore forever added me on Snapchat. At the moment, I didn't think too much of it. I figured it was just another one of my Facebook friends. Instantly, the first message this person sent me was a paper with sharpied handwriting on it and a heart drawn underneath it. It read, Hey cutie, how are you? Once four seconds had passed, the message had disappeared. I was flattered by the fact that whoever this person was referred to me as cutie. I'm guessing it was probably a girl flirting with me a little bit. I sent her back a picture of me with my eyebrow raised and a smirk on my face. After that, I added the text, I'm doing good, you think I'm a cutie? And then sent it to her for five seconds. About a few minutes later, I got another picture from her. The picture was of a teddy bear carrying a red heart with a white backdrop. The text read, you are on my top five. Right away, I wanted to know who this person was. For the next couple of days that we messaged each other, she never sent me a picture of herself. For some reason, she wouldn't even tell me her name. I kept pushing her to send me a picture, but she always made excuses or sent stupidly drawn stick figures instead. With that, I believed that she was either really ugly or really shy, and I was hoping for the latter. I decided to let it go, thinking she must really be into me if she's that secretive with revealing her face and even her name. One day while I was in the library, I checked Snapchat real quick while I was taking a break from typing a paper for one of my courses. Sure enough, there was a message from We Are One Forever. As soon as my finger tapped it open, I almost jumped out of my seat. She sent me a picture of a person, the first time she's ever done so, but that's not what got me all bothered about this picture. I knew that the picture of this person definitely was not her. In fact, it was a guy sitting on a couch, white shirt, blue sweatpants, looking straight into a laptop, bookshelves in the background. The text read, I see you. I looked behind and around me. There was no one who seemed suspicious, just a bunch of college students in their own little worlds. Still, I didn't want to read too much into it. After all, why psych myself out for something that seemed like harmless flirting? I sent her a picture of a thing that never happened before. Also, the time she sent me those messages was about six hours ago. It made me extremely hesitant to open any of them, but something inside of me was demanding me to do it. She had to be taking pictures of something else that night. I was in bed the whole time. However, once I opened her first message, I couldn't believe my own eyes, and even thought for that second that I was going insane. I wanted to scream. Immediately I regretted my decision of ever opening that message, just thinking about it gave me chills alone. At first, I couldn't make out what the picture was, 
It seemed dark, but she must have enabled the flash option because there was a bright light illuminating the subject of the picture. Even though the picture was only for a second, I was able to make out what it was in the second and third picture, and by the twentieth picture, my eyes confirmed it was someone lying in bed. It made my heart beat unnervingly fast. Those were the most horrifying seconds of my life. As I kept opening these messages, they were the same pictures of someone sleeping. The more recent messages became closer and closer views of the person. The closer they were, the more they confirmed my fears about the person in the picture. And the videos. Oh god, the fucking videos. They may have been only five videos, but they showed uncomfortable close-ups of that person's face in the glowing flashlight. And then there was that typical noisy silent audio in the background and my own sleeping face. It broke me down as I immediately dialed my college's police department. I told them someone broke into my room last night and that I was being stalked by someone I didn't know who was also sending me pictures of myself. I tried to explain as much as I could, but they couldn't even understand what I was saying because I sounded like a complete mess. And they came over to check up on my dorm room, observe any forcible entry that could have taken place, and even questioned my roommate for an hour. I showed them my Snapchat to prove the multiple messages the person was sending me. Unfortunately, they couldn't retrieve them and see the actual pictures. I told my parents about it a week later. They wanted to pick me up as soon as possible even though finals were coming up. After I was finished though, I went back home and the messages had stopped for a while. I didn't see anything from We Are One Forever for the second semester of college. The police are still trying to find out the perpetrator and are currently trying to contact the makers of Snapchat to retrieve those terrifying pictures. At that time, my life was going back to normal, and yeah, I was still using Snapchat for the innocent fun of it. The last days of the semester, though, became a different story altogether. It was a typical Friday, and I was home alone, watching TV and chowing down on snacks. I just completed the last of my finals, so I was treating myself after all that stress from college and especially from that slightly traumatizing situation. But that all changed once my phone began to vibrate. This whole wave of dizziness took over me as I read what was on the screen. We are one forever. Sent you a message. I was conflicted with what to do at the moment, and maybe I shouldn't have opened the message. Maybe I should have just deleted Snapchat from my phone and saved myself the trouble, because when I did open the message, I was clearly met with the image of my house in broad daylight. Not just my whole house, but specifically the view of the kitchen window. The picture only lasted for five seconds, and it was kind of hard to see due to its grainy quality, yet it was noticeable enough to detect my own self sitting by the table, eating my cereal in the morning looking outside the window at what I remember to be particularly nothing at all. A couple years ago, when I was 15, I was really big into Snapchat. I was kind of obsessed with building my Snap score, so I would add random friends and accept random requests to do so. It was pretty weird, I know, but being that young, my Snap score was a number that mattered to me for whatever reason. Now, a lot of my friends from school and I have this group chat. I remember it was a Saturday, when one of them mentioned we should go to the mall. A lot of them agreed, and I wanted to as well, but realized I didn't have a ride. So, I posted it on my story if anyone was able to pick me up and take me. I was more so expecting someone I knew to respond, like my cousin or something. But, I got a Snapchat back from this guy I'd never talked to before. Or, at least his bitmoji was a guy. But either way, I didn't know who it was. It said he was my friend on Snapchat but we had never had a single conversation or even shared any pictures back and forth before. He texted me something about how he was bored and had nothing better to do. I remember responding to him, asking if he even lived in the same state. It turns out he did, but the town he said he lived in was at least a two hour drive from me. I told him not to worry about it, and I didn't want him to drive two hours just to take me to the mall. But he quickly responded saying why not. At this point, the whole conversation felt off to me, but he insisted. I finally ended up agreeing. I told him he could come pick me up, but only if he was willing to send me a picture of himself. I was just trying to be cautious. A couple minutes later, he sent me a snap. 
I opened it, just to see some 30 year old guy looking back at me. The guy had on a really dirty hat smiling at the camera, though like half of his teeth were missing. The caption on the snap said he was on his way. I sat there for a second thinking it over in my head. How did the guy know where to pick me up? He didn't even ask for my address. That's when my heart dropped, realizing I had my snap map on, meaning that anyone I had as a friend on the app could easily find my address. I panicked and quickly responded to the guy apologizing, saying I actually had a closer friend willing to take me. Now, obviously that wasn't true, but the fact that this guy was willing to drive two hours to pick someone up he had never even met before, just from their location on the snap map alone, gave me an off vibe. Plus, the guy looked insanely creepy, definitely not someone I'd feel comfortable being around. The guy opened the snap a couple minutes later, but never responded. As far as I know, he never showed up. Though, I live in a cul-de-sac, and usually we wouldn't get any cars passing by our house. But I swear, for at least the next few days, there was this same black SUV that would constantly drive by. Whether that was related or not, I don't know. Though, about a month later, I was on Facebook scrolling through my feed. I passed a news story that had one of those attachments meaning it was sourced on a different website. I almost always scroll past those things, but I couldn't help but stop for this one. There, on my Facebook feed, I could clearly see a picture of that guy from Snapchat. There was no doubt in my mind it was the same guy. The headline of the news story read that he was arrested for attempted murder. This whole experience makes me think I dodged a major bullet by trusting my gut and not accepting a ride from the guy. The whole situation shook me up for a while, and nowadays I try to be a lot smarter and only allow people I trust to see me on the snap map. I'm a female, and when I was a sophomore in high school, I took a lot of different classes. One of them I don't think I'll ever forget. It was a history class, and the regular teacher for the class had another job on top of teaching. And because of this, we would often get a substitute teacher for the class. It was always the same guy. I would say he was at least in his mid-50s. Nothing ever struck me as odd about him, since if I'm being honest, I rarely even ever paid attention in that class. That was until one day. I was in the middle of working on a project he assigned, but every time I looked up for my paper, he was just staring at me. Every time I would look at him, he wouldn't even break eye contact and try to play it off either. One of the times I looked up, I noticed he had his phone pointed in my direction. It looked like he was taking pictures of me. I of course was creeped out, but didn't say anything in case I was wrong. Anyway, a few weeks later, somehow, which I still don't know how to this day, the guy found my Snapchat username and added me. I knew it was him too, as he had his full name on the account. I didn't know what to do, but I still regret the decision I made. Knowing he had an influence on my grade, I ended up adding him back. A few minutes later, he sent me a snap saying hey. He had his face in it and everything. At this point, I knew something wasn't right. I took a screenshot of the snap and left him on red. He quickly followed up with another snap, this time a black screen with a question mark as the caption. I again left him on red and forgot about the whole situation. Over the next few weeks, there were multiple occasions where I would check the snap map just to see him not far away. And this would happen anywhere too, not just at school. I would be at the mall with my friends for example, and see he just so happened to be at the same mall. Or even sometimes at school, when I knew for a fact he didn't work that day. Though, overall, for a solid month, nothing but those supposed coincidences took place regarding the whole situation. But of course, a few days later I would get a random message from him. I could tell it was a chat this time, and not a regular snap. I opened it, and I was absolutely horrified. He sent around 50 pictures of me in pretty much any situation. Some were of me at school, but others confirming my suspicion about him following me on the snap map were of me not on school campus. Obviously, I left him on red, screenshotted everything and blocked him. I instantly told my parents, and they notified both the school and the police. It's been two years since the situation. I'm a senior now, and ever since he sent the pictures, I'd never seen him again. I can only assume he was fired, as we actually got another substitute teacher who was really nice. Overall, the whole situation was really disturbing. 
the fact that I had someone following me around and taking pictures of me just based on my location on the snap map for a good month of my life absolutely terrifies me. I deleted Snapchat shortly after the whole experience, and like I said, I haven't seen the guy since, so I'm not entirely sure whatever ended up happening to him.